Hey, it's Clay. Welcome to another guitar video. This time we're going to be taking a look at this MXR Classic Overdrive, which is a pedal I have owned for a few years now. I actually think it's a pretty sweet pedal, very, um, extremely inexpensive. I know when I bought it, I got it at Guitar Center for like 30 bucks, so pretty crazy. I know, I know it's not like, um, I think there's limited availability, but if you ever have a chance to pick one of these up, I'd highly recommend it. Uh, I've read some things on the internet, and I my understanding is that it is it there actually is a hidden um, switch in the back. So my goal, and I I actually hate it when pedals have switches inside. I want them all to be on the top of the pedal so I can access them whenever I darn well please. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to open up this pedal and install a switch. And I thought I would outline the process for you guys. Um, so hopefully right here in this area, I'm going to have to drill out a little bit of a hole and install a switch. So, um, I actually have, uh, some instructions from a forum post that I will link in the description if you're curious. And if not, you can just watch the video and, uh, I will show you guys how to do it. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, first things first, in terms of what you need, uh, I've got this little switch right here. Um, this is a... I believe it's a single pole double throw switch. Um, so it just has three, one, two, three spot, spots here. It's got two selection switches. Um, and so that's going to be my switch. Got a screwdriver, got a soldering iron, some solder. Um, a little desoldering would help. Maybe a desoldering wick would be some of the basic tools that you'll need. So. Um, first things first, I'm going to go ahead and open up the pedal. These pedals are actually, I've been inside this before, but these pedals are actually pretty crazy with the way that they get everything packed inside a very compact place. Okay, so this is what it looks like on the inside. Now, um, I believe that we also need to take off the three knobs. So what they do is they mount everything on a PCB board and then um, so it all kind of is secured in place by these screws here. So I've got to take these off before we can actually take a look at it. See that's what's so annoying is you in order to get at these switches you have to actually um, open up the entire pedal. So very annoying. That's why we want to have a switch on the top. And for anybody out there, if you're looking for a very inexpensive but pretty favorably reviewed um, pedal, I think that this MXR Classic Overdrive really fits the bill. I think the biggest problem is actually availability. Um, like I said, when I got it, I was just walked into Guitar Center one day. I think I was there to buy a pack of strings. And uh, I just happened to see this thing sitting there for like 30 bucks and I was like what the world I actually asked the guy is this price actually correct because that was seems really inexpensive and um, to my knowledge the two position switch actually switches between um, a Zach Wild overdrive mode and then the other mode is like the classic you know TS-808 I think they call it the GT-808 in the MXR lineup but um so yeah pretty sweet how you can have two pedals in one. I know that the Zach Wild Overdrive and the GT-808 are, so this is, are much more expensive. So this is the actual inside. You can see they actually use micro resistors and capacitors, which is kind of annoying. Um, makes it a little bit harder to mod. In fact, I don't actually know how you would off the top of my head. It probably is possible, but it is pretty amazing how they fit everything in there. And then right here you can see is the switch. Um, I actually don't know which which way is which. Which side is which. So we're just going to have to figure it out. Um, I see some capacitors here. I'm sure that you could mess around with some of these caps. There's a diode down here. Maybe that's a clipping diode. I'm not sure. You could probably mess around with some of those capacitors, but I'm not going to do that today. So, um, Basically what you do is, if you'll notice, the bottom side, oh, lost a couple of screws. 
I hope this focuses very well. I apologize if it does not. Okay, so um, here is the the switch. And if you notice on the back, it actually has one, two, three, one, two, three. And that matches perfectly with this. So basically, we just, I'm not actually going to, um, you know, there's going to be, we'll see exactly how I'm going to, I probably just need to use a couple of short wires. But first things first is to remove this selector switch. So uh, just to visualize, it's going to be like this. And the, the switch was right in here, so then this guy is going to go right on top. Um, I don't think I can just straight up wire these. Might be kind of nice, actually, if I could, but I think what I'm going to have to do... So what I'm, what I'm doing is I'm eyeballing this line right here, because that's where the... the you know, so if we put this back in... That's the line where these guys stick out. So I know that that's about as much room as I have. So I think what I kind of want to do is, is put it in right here. Because then my... I this comes through. This guy, this shaft of this pot, will have just enough room and I can have a little bit of space to install those three short wires. So let's go ahead and get this bad boy out. There's probably a better way to do this. Um, I am going to try to use my desoldering wick, if I have one. Looks like I do. Okay, so I'm talking about this right here. Or I guess desoldering braid is the correct term. Let's go ahead and trim off some of this old used stuff, and then um, this is very simple to use, so just make sure that's the right spot. Just kind of put this right on top. Use your soldering iron. And then I need a little bit more slack. Now, um, if you... I have the type of personality that's not very, like... like the attention to detail is not one of my greatest strengths. Um, so if you've, like, my pedal builds tend to be a little bit messy. But I that, I, that is by choice, I'm okay with that. So if you are watching this and you're thinking, man, this guy is a total hack, then you are correct. I am, in fact, a total hack. There are certain things that I really do prioritize, though, um, and being, like, really secure... But other things, not so much. And I have, in fact, ruined a couple of pedals with my own. Alright, so I finally got this sucker out. Just kind of needed to keep wiggling and pulling and... Definitely uh, was a little bit of a pain, but I got it out in the end nonetheless. So, I think what I'm going to do now is I wanted to try to do a little bit of kind of thinking ahead and pre-planning. So this is kind of, what I don't want to do is get to the end and be like, oh, I don't have enough room or I didn't think this far enough ahead. I want to make sure that everything is going to fit just fine. So there really isn't a tremendous amount of room I think I'm probably going to have to drill this hole pretty darn close to the top. Okay, at this point... Taking a pen, and I'm just trying to give myself a very close estimation of where I need to actually um, drill the hole. Okay.
Not very pretty, but it's going to get the job done. Okay. So now my switch pokes through. That's good. That's what we want. Now I need to make sure... I might need to move the hole over just a little bit. Okay, there was a height screw here. I'm actually going to take that out because I think I'm going to need all the room I can get. Okay, so it goes in a little bit at an angle. Doesn't actually make it through all the way flush. So I'm going to open up the hole just a little bit more. There we go. Alright, so my switch actually fits in there pretty nicely now. I think that's going to be pretty satisfactory. So now, <clears throat> I need to wire the switch in there. Now I think what I'm going to do is actually loop the wires around and connect them on the underside. Now, I don't know, the lead PCB looks a little bit better on the top, so maybe I should try to stay with that. Okay, we're going to try something. First and foremost, I'm going to pull out some wire, and I think I'm actually going to use some solid core wire because I want to have the ability to really like mold it. And I'm going to cut a very short piece, like that long, and I'm going to try and just strip it actually quite a bit. It might just take the Strip, strip the whole thing right off. And I want to see, so it kind of looks like this. I want to see if I can, if it'll be possible to just wire it directly into the top of the board, like so. Okay, I think that might actually work pretty good. So, this piece is actually probably a little bit too long but that's okay. I think I'm just going to solder it in. I'm going to get two more just like it and then we're just going to test try this. We're going to see if it works. I have no idea if this will work or fail. We're going to give it a go. Okay, I think this piece is pretty darn long, so I'm going to actually cut it in half and use it for number two and three. Okay, so I've got three very short pieces of solid core wire, and my goal is, I don't know if you guys can see this, but I'm looping them in there and hoping that I can just go one, two, three. Okay, it falls out. I don't think I can show you guys this, but the goal, there's two, and then this would be the third. So it looks something like this. So it'll be like three little prongs coming out at the top. And I'd really like it if they were all kind of of similar length. Oh, 
Okay. Well, it's not ideal, but we're gonna we're gonna try this. This is gonna be a little bit of an experiment. I have no idea if this is gonna work or not. But that's the only way you learn is to well one is asking questions, which is always a good thing to do. There's a lot of really good places on the internet to learn things. And two is to make mistakes. Okay, these guys are getting a, to be a little bit annoying, so I'm going to use my tool here. Oh, darn it. Use my tool here to try and get them to stay where I want so I can solder them in. Maybe I'll just do it one at a time. That'll probably be easier. All right, let me refocus this. Maybe that will be better. All right, we're gonna put this first guy in. So one of the things that I've learned in my days of soldering, oh, so I'm not a, I don't know if this joint was very good, so I'm just going to give it a little bit extra heat and hope that it resettles. It's kind of being a little weird. I have not used these switches before, so I don't actually know if they are good. Okay, so that first one is in. First guy is soldered in like that. We're going to try the second one now. <clears throat> Again, I don't really need very much wire. And I can use my pliers to cut off, because it looks like that one is going to be potentially touching his neighbor. Okay, that one looks fine. And we don't want that. That might short it out. Now for the third one, you can bend these wires a little bit, but because they're solid core, you want to be a little bit more cautious because they're not quite as, uh, they don't enjoy the motion quite as much. Don't want too much solder, just enough to form the bond. Okay, so I've got three wires in. Now I just want to see if this will potentially work before I kind of clean it up a little bit. So I'm going to try to straighten them out a little bit. And they're of different lengths, which is fine. Yeah, I actually think this will work pretty good. So what I want to do now is take my snippers here. And try and snip off just a little bit of this extra, you don't want this 
quite so much you know on, on the part that's already stuck through the terminal okay so now it looks like this and we're going to see if this will work so I've got two leads that are a little longer than the third that's okay but I know so I've kind of am just setting them on top like this and we're gonna see if I can use my soldering iron to heat up the terminal and just get that poking through there we go okay so I've got one through I got this make sure the third one is in position it looks like it is Try to get yeah I think I'm gonna run into the same problem I had pulling these dumb things out although hopefully as I get this guy through I will be able to get some of that solder to go on the little piece of wire that's stuck through okay well it's kind of like this. I'd really like to get it in there a little bit further. If I can. So it looks like two of the wires are actually poking through. One and two. I don't want to push too hard because I really don't want to bend those leads. third one is not quite in yet okay the first one looks like it's in pretty darn good the second one it's okay see the middle one doesn't like to go in as well because it's being restricted on the sides Ideally, like to just get it in there just a little bit more. I'm pretty close. All right, so this is the completed product. All I did was reassemble and rescrew everything on. Made a little bit of a mess, but uh, I'm okay with that. You can see there's actually my first attempt at drilling the hole left that little opening there on the side, but that doesn't really bother me. So um, go ahead and take keep your eye open and check out. I think I'm going to do another video where I flick back and forth to show the total differences. But that's the basic process for installing a switch into your MXR Classic Overdrive. Thanks.